Hey, what's up guys? My name is Boda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is just going to give an overall update on how the KS3M is doing. We're going to look at its current profitability, current yield, how much it's made so far, what the outlook is kind of looking like, right? So we're going to just take an overall look at the Casper mining landscape, as well as talk about this new tool from T-Swift to be able to check those chip temperatures for the Ice River ASICs. Because even if your ASIC is doing well, like I wasn't really too worried about it because mine has kind of been overperforming. It's been doing good. Checked it out out of curiosity and a little surprised with what I found, right? So we're going to talk about it, talk about those temperatures and what I did about it and how it affected that, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to this thing. So overall, Caspa has been in this range, right? It's between 10 and a half cents and 12 cents for what seems like quite a while now, right? It's been, and it has been, it's been, we had that pump in November. We did dip sometime mid-December and it's just been in this range, right? Which is kind of good overall. We did have this recent little dump though today, right? We actually did go below 10 cents. Went down to 0 0.096, so nice little dip, and it was an overall market dip. It wasn't specific to Caspa, so a nice little DC opportunity for anybody who wanted. My personal threshold, I'm looking for under eight cents, right? So I'm a little bit more picky. I have a good allocation. I'm looking for other deals with other things to build up that. But um, it's been hovering in this range, which for me is what I want to see, right? Being a Caspa ASIC owner, this is the ideal situation. Right, because then what's gonna happen if we do get into my DCA range territory, obviously I'll DCA. The downfall is the value and the price of these ACs is gonna go down, right? So if you're in the market for one, it's gonna benefit you. But this is coming from my perspective as a person who has one currently, my ideal situation is for it to hover where it's at, right? Because again, if we do dip, price is gonna go down, which honestly was my expectation that this January batch, we would see a price reduction because we've been seeing that, right? Pretty much every month, Every restock, there's been a price dip, right? So far, we didn't get one in December. We haven't gotten the one this month. And even if we do get one here in the next few days, it's gonna be Chinese New Year. So it's gonna be a while before it comes anyway. So potentially February, most likely maybe a little dip, we'll see. And then as far as price action goes, let's say we did pump. Yes, the value of that guy is gonna go up, but guess what? They're gonna be making as many of these things as they can, just like with that November pump, right? They're gonna try to max it out and what's going to happen the freaking difficulty and the hash rate is going to go through the roof right so again me from my perspective not what i want to see right ideally perfect scenario is for it to just stay where it's at keep it up for another month let me make the bulk of my investment back and then it could do whatever the heck it wants right um if we look at the overall yield if we go on mine the asic it's pretty much right on par right according to them we'd be getting about 492 um, when I show my numbers, it'll be for the KS3M as well as the KS0 Pro, right? So the numbers are going to be a little bit off, a little bit different from that. It's actually not much higher than that currently. Obviously, it's going to depend on the day, depending on the luck of the pool, right? That's going to be your biggest thing. But it's hovering between 500 to 530 pretty much consistently, right? Um, as far as the fiat profitability, which again, I'm not really concerned with, it's $43 a day. So it is going down, of course, with the price action and, of course, with the difficulty. Right, which so far, it's been doing all right. Right, we haven't seen a significant pump, but again, it's because there hasn't been a significant change in the price or significant restocks, right? Because they're available, they're there, they're stocked, but people are waiting on price action, right? And a lot of the vendors are waiting on the price action. It seems like initially they were gonna dip because for, well, right at the end of December, the KS3Ms did go down for like a day or two down to like 71, 7200. Right, it literally lasted a day or two and that was it though. Right, it went back up. And right now it kind of seems like they're on the fence, like they were expecting a pump just because of all the ETF hype. So it kind of seems like they're kind of like unsure where to go. So the prices so far have remained steady. Ultimately, actually the past few days they have gone up a tad bit, which is a little interesting there. Um, but overall we can see it has been holding. It's been now since about towards the end of December, it's been between like 135 and 145. Right, so it's gonna continue to go up just because it's hovering here. It's going to go up no matter what. It's not like these other ASICs where, okay, even if the price tanks in, if we go down to like eight cents, seven cents, people are not gonna be unplugging. All the ASICs are gonna be profitable, right? Obviously, some are gonna be more profitable than others, 
but they're still going to be in profits. So there's going to be no reason for them to disconnect. So that's why the difficulty is going to continue to go up no matter what, right? Especially now we got news of another manufacturer jumping in gold shell decided to be super late to the party and jump in. We'll see what they come up with. The only little bit of news they gave us is that they're going to have like a small miner as well as a professional miner, meaning the small miner could be either a box or a light, and then their big miner being one of their pros, right? Being like a KS6 or a KS5 or whatever the heck they're gonna call it. The only little bit of news they gave us is one of the models is gonna be over one terahash. So say, think of something between like a KS1, KS2. I could see something in like the form factor of like that guy, like a little light thing. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the prices are. That's gonna be the main, the main driver. To me, it's going to be a hard sell, man. Like if Ice River wasn't around, this is their niche, right? To create like these fractionalized versions and that would be their thing. But uh, so I kind of have a hard time believing that they're going to be able to outmatch and outprice any of the Ice Rivers, right? Maybe they are. They better actually if they want any chance to be able to sell any of these things. They, It has to be, right? So I'm very curious as to what it is, but I'm not too optimistic, especially if we got the freaking price points on those Zia coin miners, freaking ridiculous. I might just do a dedicated video on just how ridiculous those things are, but um, we'll see what they do. Not too optimistic. They've been making a lot of weird, borderline stupid choices this this pair market. We'll see, we'll see what they come up with, but um, that could affect it, you know, maybe it is a really good deal, maybe it is. I don't see it being much more efficient, if more efficient at all, right? I think the main thing that maybe they could get them on would be the price. We'll see, right? And then as far as Ice River goes, kind of weird on their end too, on the website, because typically they've been doing this thing, it's been like a monthly restock, right? Monthly restock, the shipping window at, from the 15th to the end of the month. They kind of didn't do it for December or January. They did do it for the K0 Pros. Those were made available, but if you click on like the KS1s, KS2s, they weren't, right? They even have the old dates on here, but they did do stocks, right? If you follow any of the vendors, any of the stores, they had, did have a December batch and they do have a January batch. And as of right now, a lot of the stores have them in stock, right? So it is kind of interesting, like what's going on here? Were they smaller batches? Maybe that's why they didn't release them on here. Or are they like preparing to make a mega batch in anticipation that maybe we do get a pump? Maybe there is a big listing. Maybe the Rust protocol update goes into effect and they're expecting a pump. Maybe that's why, so they can just have a mass allocation. Who knows, right? But it is a little bit weird. Um, it is, again, it is kind of weird. Ultimately, the prices did go up a bit, just specifically these past few days, right? They were kind of stagnant and fairly low. And out of nowhere, they kind of raised them. So I'm kind of curious as to what's going on there. We'll find out in a little bit, but... um. Overall, things are going pretty good. Again, I know a lot of people aren't too happy with the price action, but if you have an ASIC, this is kind of what you want to see. <laughs> we want to try to maximize those yields because again, even just one additional month at this rate, I'll be golden, right? I'll be extremely happy, right? So we'll see what happens though. We'll see how it goes, but things are looking good. And again, my thing is it's going to be long-term anyway, right? But ideally, perfect world, it'd be nice to be able to maximize this and then go from there, right? Because at that point, if I made the majority of my investment back already, then at that point, it gives me more options. Like, okay, I can hang on to it. I made X amount of cash. We have this huge pump and now it's worth, now people are selling it for 11K, 12K. So now on top of the amount of yield I got, I can sell it. You know, you have more options at that point. Realistically, unless we have a crazy significant action going on, it's gonna be to hold it all the way until the bull market, right? So we'll see. Hopefully it lasts that long. <laughs> we'll see on that end too. But um, overall, as far as how it's doing, uh, it's been solid, right? So overall, the total for the past six weeks, as of today, it's been officially been six weeks. It's at 25,600 is how much Casper has made. Initially started at the first few days I got it, it was making around 700 cash a day. It's currently down to about 500 now. So again, that number is with two mites with the KS3M as well as the KS0 Pro. Okay, so as a look down here, you can kind of see on the little chart how it's been going down gradually. It was initially, because of the first few days I was on, was a Hero Miners, right? And that's what it was 700. So by this point, the 21st, it was down to 663. You can see even just a week later down to 607. 
another week later 581 and it's just been a gradual downfall and it's going to continue right and this is no shocker we already knew as a matter of fact i had it calculated it was going to be less at this point and i'm good right it's going to continue to go down it's not something that's you know surprising or shocking that is what it is we're going to go from there you can see down here most recently it's hovering right in that 500 range right on the 17th it was actually the day i repasted it we'll talk about that here in a second so that's why those rewards are significantly down. But then 485, 500 today, 510, 535 on the 15th. But um, we'll see. So far, it's been going good. It's been doing its thing. If we look at the current hash rate, right, it's going to fluctuate all over. But it's been hovering in the same rate. It's between 6 to like 6.4, right? Ultimately, here you can see it has been a bit higher. This big old dip is again from the when I was repasting it. It was down for a little bit, um, but it's been doing its thing, right? As far as the three-hour average is 6.27, the 24-hour is 6.19, right? Which is where it's supposed to be at, right? Um, now let's look at these freaking temperatures, right? So. Sure, a lot of you guys caught RPM's video. He did a video recently regarding the thermal paste job, right? So. When I ran mine, I decided T-Swift had this little tool. Let's look up the pictures. There we go. So here you can see a nice little comparison, right? It was just a screenshot. So I did do that little tool that T-Swift had. Kind of a little surprised because I didn't even wasn't even going to do it because I was looking at my temps and the performance and it was performing where it should be at. Um, even on the warmer days, it was doing fine. So I was like, eh, we'll do it just out of curiosity. So this is the older version. That's why it doesn't have the colors and it's outdated looking. But when you download the newer version, it is like easier to read because you'll see the colors, you'll see the warning signs or whatever. But you can see here, this is from board one, right? You can see the comparison. This is prior to the paste. This is after repasting it, right? You can see chip one, 97 degrees, right? So what caught me right off the window and what, why I decided to repaste is not only because of that super high temp, but the variations, right? We have 97 up here. We have all the way down to freaking 77 down here, right? So that's a huge change as we go down. So we can see the difference here. It's about 11 degrees Celsius difference between chip one before the paste and then after the paste job. Some of the other ones, it's even crazier, right? Especially in the midsection, you can see here it's all 93s in the middle from chip 7 to 14, right? But when we look over here, it goes down to 81, 79, 77. Like in some cases, it's a pretty significant difference. So it's anywhere from like 10 to 15 degrees. Some cases, not as much, but that's a huge difference, right? Especially because right now we're spoiled, right? So even down here, it is cooler. I did have to wait a few days. I wanted to do it the that same day or the day after, but we actually had cooler weather even down here today or when i did the screenshots it was a warmer day because i wanted to have a fair comparison right i wanted it to be the same temperature as the day i took them and then the day i took them after because i don't want it to have it be one temperature one day and then the next day it was freaking for us it's freaking freezing right it's being 45 50 degrees it's a huge difference right so I had a way for it to warm up to have a fair comparison and it's a pretty significant difference right so if any of you guys do have Ice River Asics, I would highly recommend looking into repasting it. And out of curiosity, any of you guys who do have, ice, especially prior batches, any of you guys who have prior batches, if you guys use that tool, it's going to put a link to RPM's video on there. I'm sure we've seen it. It's in his Discord. He does have a download link. I encourage you, though, to put your temperatures in the comments, right? So I'm curious about prior shipments. It does seem like a lot of people I've talked to who did get KS3Ms on the same batch I did, similar results, right? Not as bad as like RPMs though, but a lot of you guys are pretty similar. So this is a close-up shot of what was found, right? So in RPM's response, RPM had put a tweet about it. Ice River did respond and they were blaming it on shipping and the movement and all this nonsense. Nothing to do with it, right? I looked at every single chip, all of it. Nothing was loose. Everything was there. It's the same thing across the board, right? It's just crappy paste they used. Now, what I'm curious about, if it, it was just specific to this batch or if it's been all the batches, right? It's been cooler weather, so maybe that's why people haven't noticed. And again, even like myself, the my guy was actually overperforming a bit. So I was like, nah, I'm good. 
until I ran it and until I cracked it open and saw this, right? So that's when I decided 100%, definitely got to repaste. So if you guys have any of the ASICs, I think now with the latest update, it'll do all of them if you have KS1s, KS2s, even if your performance is good and your overall temps seem to be good, I would highly encourage you to download that tool and look at those temperatures, right? To look for any inconsistencies. Because again, what stood out to me was having those freaking 20 degree variations, right? So on top of getting that cooling benefit, because again, right now it's not necessarily super important, but in a few months, like again, for us, we're cool right now. We're going to be cool next month, but already mid-March. Mid-March, it's game on. We can have like nine, between 95, 99 degree days. We'll have cooler days as well, but we have the potential to already have those freaking hot days by that time. Right. So for like for me, again, being here in Florida, temperature is a big deal. Right. So any little advantage I can get, like 10 degrees Celsius, like being able to cool it by that much is a significant difference. Right. So definitely want to check out that tool. Again, I'll post the link to that video in the comments. Should have a link for his discord in there. But I think people have been downloading it from his discord. Right. So. Something you definitely want to see in case you haven't seen his video. You can see it on here. You can see his like his temps were really bad, right? Freaking 109 degrees. Pretty insane, right? So some were worse than others, right? But this would definitely be shocking. So again, you definitely, definitely want to see what's going on with your miner. So he did use just Arctic MX-6. This is exactly what I used. No issues with it. Worked out well. A little time consuming to get all little dots, but definitely worth it in the end right especially for not that much only a couple bucks and i know some of you guys might be nervous about oh man i'm gonna crack over my asic you should be comfortable you should be trying to get comfortable with doing that as far as doing maintenance cleaning blowing it out anyway so get used to it. if you're gonna get in the asic games it's gonna be part of it right because that's definitely a big part of the maintenance is just keeping up with it right because you want this thing to last that is a big investment got to take care of it right so let me know, guys, if any of you guys do have any, if you guys try out the tool, let me know what you found, right? Did you see these huge fluctuations in temperature? Were yours actually good? Did you have an older batch, maybe a September, October batch, and yours was actually fine? Or did you see something similar, right? Let's, let's let it be known. Let's see what we find. Let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. And I am out.